हे एवरी वन वेलकम टू बाई जूस क्लास एट नाइन एंड टेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी हैप्पी न्यू ईयर टू वन एंड ऑल हाउ आर यू हाउ इज एवरी वन हाई शामून हाई अदिति हे साक्षी हाई आद्रा हे सुहानी हाउ इज दिस न्यू ईयर ट्रीटिंग यू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू फाइनली गुड आफ्टरनून हाई वृति हे अदिति हे जरीना you really wanted us to come up with class 8 so there you go and here we are with our very first session hi sangeeta good evening hi anju hi rudrakshi so happy to see you all hey adira thank you same to you hi shia hey nirupama hi abhinav great great let's wait for few more minutes let everybody be here hey pratesh hi abhinav namaste hi harvis all right so today we are going to have our first session for class 8th right we will be having all the mind maps short concepts amazing activities together but before we kick start this session you have to do something you have to confirm if everything is working fine so you can post loads of thumbs up you can post loads of smiley check the audio check the video check the clarity of the ppt and let me know if i'm perfectly audible and visible to everyone good evening parimala hi anju hey anita okay so tomorrow it's a birthday nice hey abhinav hey viraj great So Adira says everything is audible, visible, perfect. Zarina is giving thumbs up. Monica is giving smileys. Nice. Hey Isha. Hi Vishnu. Absolutely, Shamun. Great. Hi Abhinav. Namaste. Hi Kaushal. Aditi is also giving loads of thumbs up. Nice. All right. So in today's session, we are going to have interactive learning elements as well. So you people have to be really interactive. You people keep posting whatever comes to your mind. So I'm going to look at the comments section and read all your comments. Yes, absolutely. Bilkul. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of our sessions. Now we have already started with class eight as well. Great. amazing yes i am also really excited this is our first session together absolutely bilkul so few things i will be telling you few things i'll be learning from you together we can have a great interactive session yes definitely we've got you covered rutu hi isha all right I think we are good to go. I've got loads of thumbs up that the setup is working absolutely fine. So let's quickly start with the session now. So what are we going to cover today? We'll master everything on combustion. Hey, do you know the working of engines? Maybe a car engine, rocket engine. How exactly are they working? Anybody? Yes, absolutely. Hi, Radhya. No, no, we've just started. You're not late. Hi Supriya yes this topic is like a hint for you people so combustion is taking place there right now let's see let's explore and master this topic so what we've done we've divided combustion and flame into three topics sub topics for that matter three major sub topics so we will be starting with the first that is combustion so let's understand what combustion is a chemical process in which a substance reacts with oxygen so a chemical reaction is taking place and this substance is reacting with oxygen to give off heat and light and this is known as combustion so basic definition there is a substance and this substance is reacting with oxygen to give off heat and light someone's saying burning of fuels okay great great nice coal and petroleum yeah that's the chapter all right 
So, this is what combustion is. Now, let's see what are combustible and non-combustible substances. Let's start with the combustible one. I think the name is self-explanatory. When we talk about combustible substance, these are the substances which can undergo combustion. So easy, so basic, right? So, we've seen matchstick burn, right? Paper, coal, petrol, all these are combustible substances. Clothes, they are combustible. Kerosene, that's combustible. Hey, hydrogen gas is also combustible. So, if you know any other element, any other substance, you can place it in the comment section below. Absolutely. Did you know there are one, more than 140 combustible substances? Now think about it, how many of them are you aware of? Yes, more than 140. Yeah, you may think, think about it, how many of, you, how many of them are you aware of? Yes, okay, I can see some of you posting about hydrogen, LPG, wood, great. Alright, moving on to non-combustible one. Well, it's again very basic. These are the substances which do not go, do not undergo combustion. So, combustible ones, they are undergoing combustion. Non-combustible ones, they are not undergoing combustion. This is a very interesting, very easy chapter. Bricks, sand, iron nails, glass or any other substance that you think is non-combustible, you can post it over here. Yes, absolutely. So, no wonder houses are made up of bricks, right? Great. Yes, true, absolutely right. Now, we've, we now know what combustible and non-combustible substances are, right? Let's move on to the next part. What are the conditions required for combustion? You see a term over here, oxygen. That's the first thing that you require for combustion. It's necessary for combustion. Okay, you must have done this activity in class 6. That is related to a burning candle. So, if you have a burning candle, it's burning brightly, happily. But now, if you put and you cover it with an inverted glass container, what's going to happen? After some time, it stops burning. Right? Now, what is happening over here? Once all the oxygen gets used up, burning stops. That means oxygen is necessary for combustion. Hey, Sakshi knows about this activity. Great. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, Harvis. So, we've got a combustible substance and this substance is reacting with oxygen to give you heat and light. If oxygen is not there, of course, that's a necessary condition for combustion. So, it will not take place. Now, when we talk about combustion, it can be complete or it can be incomplete. What do you mean by complete? What do we mean by incomplete? Let's see. Complete basically means that supply of oxygen is unlimited. Bohat sara oxygen hai, so burning bohat aram se ho pa hai. In this case, suppose you have a carbon-based compound and it's undergoing combustion, carbon dioxide gas will be produced. But hey, what if the supply of oxygen is limited? In that case, what we have is incomplete combustion. So, you get carbon monoxide, soot particles. Yeah? Nice. So, this is about complete and incomplete combustion. Yes, Adira, absolutely right. You get carbon monoxide in case you are having incomplete combustion. Alright. Now, what do we see over here? Ignition temperature. Have you heard about this term before? Okay, let's say that you have a single matchstick with you. Okay, and with that matchstick, you try to burn a paper. You will be successful, right? But if you do the same with a piece of wood, with a log of wood, how many of you think you will be able to burn wood with one single piece of matchstick? Let's see. Let me see if I get thumbs up or I get thumbs down. Will you be able to burn a log of wood with one single piece of matchstick? No, maybe, I don't think so. Adira says it's not possible. Aradhya says no. Adira says no. Yeah, and that's the basic concept of ignition temperature. So, the lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire is your ignition temperature. 
if this ignition temperature is not reached then in that case the substance will not be able to catch fire over here what do we have we've got paper we've got wood petrol and candle wax so compare the ignition temperature of paper with that of wood clearly paper has lower ignition temperature that's why it's easier to burn paper as compared to wood so paper has an ignition temperature of 233 degrees celsius wood has 310 degrees celsius petrol 220 degrees celsius and candle wax 300 degree celsius yes absolutely great bilkul sahi you people know it all already now when we talk about ignition temperature and those substances which have low ignition temperature they can catch fire very very easily because see if the ignition temperature is low that might be easily achievable right so if it is easily achievable that particular substance can catch fire very easily and what do we call such substances we call such substances as inflammable substances now i would like to pinpoint something over here usually what do you think when you read inflammable you think you know it's the opposite of flammable so let me correct you over here inflammable are those substances which have very low ignition temperature and they can easily catch fire with a flame so this is not the opposite of flammable substances hey suhani has already given example also valsa you are absolutely right now let's look at the examples that we have petrol lpg hydrogen hey what's the full form of lpg quickly anyone let's see what's the full form of lpg this is a very basic question i know so i should get all unanimous answer coming my way yes adira petrol is inflammable substance great cng lpg are fuels isha rishab ashish everybody is saying it's liquefied petroleum gas absolutely correct so petrol liquefied petroleum gas and hydrogen all these substances are inflammable substances now as i promised you earlier we are going to have fun filled activity right so this is the time where we learn in a very interesting way so learning is going to become fun now okay now let's see what's going to happen in the next segment all right so there is an activity that we are going to do together then based on that there is going to be a question for you people and you will only tell me the answer done after this activity i will tell you what needs to be done okay if you are ready give me a thumbs up then i'll tap on this button to start quickly ready for this interactive element that we have for you here you want to have menti as well okay you post it in the comment section and then quickly we'll come up with menti quiz also for class 8 all right all of you seem excited so let's start now over here we have four substances with us we've got phosphorus we've got cotton wood and coal i can tap on any of these to know about their temperature about their ignition temperature so tell me let me ask you only i should start with phosphorus or cotton or wood or coal let's see do they burn easily or do they require a lot of high temperature okay let's see which one anything anything of your choice and we'll observe the temperature at which these substances can catch fire okay all right shivansh says phosphorus sapna says phosphorus so let's start with phosphorus now look at phosphorus and look at the temperature at which it can catch fire hey we reach that temperature so quickly it's just 30 degrees celsius so white phosphorus by the way we can have white phosphorus red phosphorus as of now we are talking about white phosphorus has a very low ignition temperature of just 30 degree celsius that means it can catch fire very very easily all right okay next let me pick up say wood let's see is it easy to burn wood not so easy to burn wood 
All right, we went up till 310 degrees Celsius. So, wood has a high ignition temperature of 310 degree Celsius. So, obviously, it does not catch fire very easily. All right, Anju wants cotton, Vishnu wants cotton. So, there you go. Let's see. We all know what cotton is, right? Is it easy to burn cotton? Does it catch fire easily? Well, yes, at 120 degree Celsius. So, since cotton has a low ignition temperature of 120 degree Celsius, it catches fire quite easily. Now, coming to coal. Let's see. Oh God, we are just going up higher and higher in this temperature range. But finally, we have stopped at 500 degree Celsius. Now, coal has a very high ignition temperature of 500 degree Celsius. So, it does not catch fire very easily. Now, you know what ignition temperature is. You know, few substances which are burning easily, few of them which are not burning very easily. Next segment is a question for you people. And let me see how many of you will be getting this one right. So, in case you want to write the answer, you can put it in the comment section below. And whatever you will tell me, I will put ticks there only. Let me read the question for you. Ignition temperature of fuels A, B, C and D are 44 degrees Celsius, 53 degrees Celsius, 64 degrees Celsius and 88 degrees Celsius respectively. Which fuel or fuels will burn if temperature is increased to 60 degrees Celsius? And hey, they have written something over here that more than one option can be correct. So, more than one option guys. Let's see. Ruthu says A and B. Shamoon also says A and B. Rishabh says A, B and C. Are there I saying fuel A? See, I will put ticks wherever I feel majority of you are saying something. Sapna says A and B. Aditi says A and B. Supriya is also saying A and B. Azira says A, B. Hey, Shivansh is saying A, B and C. Okay. All right. Isha says B. So, most of you are saying A and B. Are you ready to check the answer now? Let's see what we are discussing. Is this right also or wrong? So, let me submit the answer and we can see. All right. We got the answer right. And we just ex explored what ignition temperature is. Let's look at the solution now. The lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire is known as its ignition temperature. And it is specif specific for a substance, okay? That's why when we saw that slide, different substances had different ignition temperatures. 60 degrees is higher than the ignition temperature of both fuel A and B. They will start burning when they reach their ignition temperature. Let me go back to the options once. For fuel C, the temperature was 64 degrees Celsius for burning, right? So, we never reached that temperature, so it did not burn. Similarly, for fuel D, 88 degrees Celsius, right? Again, we did not reach that temperature, so this fuel was also not burning. Supriya finds this activity cool. Great! Alright, okay. So, let me do one thing. There is a link being given to you in the description box below. After this class, hey, after this class, I know you're really excited to solve that question. But post this session, go solve that question. This in another interactive element for you people over there. And let's see how many of you will get that one right. Great. All right, Zarina. Thank you, Supriya. It's okay, Risha. We are here to learn only. All right. Chalo, let's move on. So, we know what conditions are required for combustion. Next, what do we have? We have types of combustion. Now, let's see what are the various types of combustion. We've got rapid combustion, we've got spontaneous combustion and we've got explosion. Now, what exactly is rapid combustion? When we talk about rapid combustion, certain fuels they burn rapidly, right? They are quickly burning. They are producing heat and light when ignited by an external source. Now, this is the keyword to note over here, external source. So, examples are matchstick and LPG burner. Now, the name is self-explanatory. Rapid combustion means something that's burning rapidly. Now, what I want you to do is, you will guess 
what is the material that the matchbox is made up of? That's why matchstick is catching fire. What's the reason behind it? Yes, how many of you are going to explore more about matchstick and matchbox? Great. Absolutely. Okay, done. Next is spontaneous combustion. Now, when we talk about spontaneous combustion, certain fuels catch fire immediately without any external ignition source. Okay, this time there is no external source. Phosphorus and coal dust in mines, they are catching fire very, very easily. They are having low ignition temperature, right? That's why they are catching fire very easily. So, this is about spontaneous combustion. Next one is very basic. You all know that, right? We've got fireworks. That is an example of explosion. You must have observed this recently. Hey, New Year's. I hope some of, some of you observe fireworks. So, a sudden reaction with the evolution of heat, light and sound along with the liberation of a large amount of gas. That is your explosion. Yes, Ashish is saying, you observe this. New Year's Day, great. Red phosphorus, white phosphorus, nice. Pratesh is talking about explosion of sodium metal in water. Suhani, Supriya, everybody is saying yes, great. Okay, Adira has already started exploring about matchbox. All right, nice. Now, stopping combustion. Let's see. How can we actually stop combustion? First of all, you must know what are the requirements. You, de you need a fuel, you need oxygen, basically air, like air containing oxygen and heat. So if I remove any one of them, I can easily stop fire, isn't it? If I remove any of one of them, the requirements of combustion is not fulfilled and I can stop combustion. So how to control fire by removing any one of them, right? Hey, I see the word fire over here. What do you think, Earth, is Earth the only planet where fire can burn or is there any other planet? Yes. I was just wondering, is it, is it just Earth where fire is burning? What do you think? Is there any other planet other than Earth? Let's see. Pritesh says no, Shivansh says no. Sapna says only on earth and you people are right. So fire is there. Don't go on the temperature part. Temperature, higher temperature might be there but we are talking about fire burning, right? Alright. So let's do one thing. Let's start with the fuel part of it. When the gas stove is switched off, we know how to switch off a gas stove, right? What happens? We in a way we are cutting off the supply of fuel and if fuel is not there, then of course no burning will take place. No fire would be there. That's why it's dangerous to keep it open all the time, right? Yes, absolutely. Amazing. Next, what do we have? Hey, this is a very basic one. This is a very, very simple one. I hope you know it. In case you don't know it, this is something that you should know for an emergency as well. So, in case there's a person and fire is taking place over there, He's caught up with fire. You can wrap a blanket around that person to cut off the supply of oxygen. Yes. So this is like an emergency situation that might be there. And you must be aware of how to deal with it. Bilkul. So chemistry is all around you. And you can apply chemistry on a daily basis. You just need to be aware of these little tricks, right? Bilkul say. Chalo, moving on to the next one. Now, sand is also helpful in extinguishing fires by cutting off the supply of oxygen. So, this is also something that you might have observed. Now, the next one is fire extinguisher. So, fire extinguishers can also be used to cut off the supply of air and they bring down the temperature of fuel. So, there is a red bottle over here. How many of you have observed this red bottle? Maybe in your chemistry lab, bio lab, physics lab, any building, mall. Now, this is a very common thing. A red bottle, which is a fire extinguisher. Are you aware? Are you, are you aware of the working? Let's see. 
How many of you have been observant? How many of you observe when you walk around? Shamun says, yes, I do. With a very funky morticon. Supriya says, yes. Okay. So, let's see how exactly this fire extinguisher works. So, there's a bottle which contains sulfuric acid and we also have a solution of sodium bicarbonate. Now, when the knob is struck, what happens? Have a look over here. The bottle breaks and there is a reaction that is taking place between sulfuric acid and sodium bicarbonate because of which this gas is being released which is carbon dioxide. This gas, carbon dioxide is being released. So, percentage of CO2 increases and what happens to the supply of oxygen? Supply of oxygen decreases. So, in a way you are able to control fire because now this essential element oxygen is not there. Monica says, I have observed. Great Monica. Hey, Sapna says she has used it also. That's really cool. Nice. Okay, moving on to the next one. Water cools the combustible material and brings its temperature below its ignition temperature. We all know that, right? So, water can also help in controlling fire. Now, somebody was asking about ice. So, what do you think? Can ice catch fire? That's, a, that's actually a very amazing question. Can ice catch fire? So, basically, we are using water to cool down the substance, to control fire. Is there a way by which ice can catch fire? Yes, no, maybe. So, all of you observed fire extinguisher in your school. That's great. That's great. Not catch. Okay, Shamun says it cannot. Swami Lakshmi says yes. Kaushal says no. Krish says yes. I'm getting yes, no. Yes, no and the series goes on. Alright, okay. There's a substance called calcium carbide. If you add it to ice, then something happens. What happens, you will figure out. So, calcium carbide, when it's added to ice, there's this a product that is being formed and that product can easily catch fire. So, yes, ice after addition of certain substance can also catch fire. Isn't this amazing? We talk about water controlling fire and then we suddenly add calcium carbide to, uh, to ice and then it catches fire. Great. Alright, chalo. Now, we know what combustible, non-combustible substances are. We know about conditions that are required for combustion. We know about types of combustion and we know about how to stop combustion. So, this was all about combustion. Now, are you ready for the next part? So, let's explore everything about flame. Hey, usually we think that, you know, flame is there when there is fire. Okay, but that's not necessary. Fire may burn with or without flame. Isn't this amazing? So, there may be a flame, there may not be a flame and yet there can be fire. Yes. So, let's see. Let's explore this topic a bit more. Substances which vaporize during burning, they produce flame. For example, wax, kerosene. So, any substance, if it, if it is able to vaporize, then only we will get a flame. But in case the substance is not able to vaporize, it is not going to produce a flame. For example, charcoal. How many of you have observed burning of charcoal? We don't see flames out there, right? Yes, absolutely. I really know that you people want menti quiz. So, we are going to come up with menti quiz for class 8th also. Whatever you want, keep posting here. We'll pick it up from here and definitely we'll be back with some amazing sessions for you people. Ardha says burning charcoal is all red. Yeah, it's glowing. It's definitely glowing without a flame. Matt Scott Dance has observed this. Alright, now let's explore the structure of a flame. This is how a flame looks right, right? We've, we've observed a candle, we've observed this before. Let me do one thing, let me magnify it for you. So that we get to know about various zones. Now this is the innermost zone which is dark. It has unburned carbon, a temperature of 600 degrees Celsius and it's the least hot zone. 
So there are various zones when you talk about candles. There are various colors, right? So if you were inquisitive enough, you would have known this by now. If not, we can still be learning from it. So next time you see a burning candle, you can actually notice different colors are there, different shades are there. And why are these shades different? That's what we are discussing. But hey, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful around fire, flame, all these substances. So keep this in mind that safety is the most important thing. Okay. Now this is the innermost zone. Let's move on. Let's see what's ahead of us. Then we've got a middle zone. We see something orangish yellow out there. That's a luminous zone. So partial combustion is taking place. Therefore, it is moderately hot. Say a temperature of around 1200 degrees Celsius. Now this is your middle zone. Let's come out. Let's move out and now see the outer zone which is non-luminous. Over here, complete combustion is taking place. That's why it is the hottest zone. Now, why is it the hottest zone? Because obviously complete combustion is taking place. Supply of oxygen is very good. First body has supply, that's why complete combustion is taking place. And the temperature is around 1400 degree Celsius. All right, yes. Now, this is how a candle, a flame basically looks like. You know about the innermost zone, which is the dark zone. You know about the middle zone, which is the luminous one. And you know about the outermost, which is the non-luminous zone. So next time, you can easily observe these three different colors. And you would know more than that, right? You would know about the zones, about temperatures, about complete and complete combustion, everything. Nice. Great. All right. So this was about flame. Now, let's move on to the next segment. That is fuel. What exactly are fuels? We've heard about this term fuels, right? We know what fuels are, but how do we actually define fuel? Well, these are the sources of heat energy. They're providing us heat for domestic and industrial purposes. So we've been using fuel ever since. Like how, how do we cook food otherwise? We are using fuel, right? Wood, charcoal, petrol, kerosene, all these are fuels. These are examples of fuels. Now you are going to name three more substances. Come on, in the comment section, tell me three more substances which can be considered as fuel. Ritesh says kilojoule. Okay, okay, we are going to come to it. We are going to come, a, come to a very interesting numerical, don't worry. Alright, now when we talk about fuel, we have to talk about ideal fuel. Let's see what an ideal fuel is. Now, we call a fuel an, an ideal fuel if it is economic, okay? If, if it's not that expensive, it's easily available, it's not producing any undesirable residue because we don't want pollution, right? Fuel is something that we use on a daily basis. If it's going to cause a lot of pollution, that's a matter of concern for us and we don't want that, right? So, it should not produce undesirable substances or residues and it should have high calorific value. Hey, there's a new term out there, calorific value. So, let's understand what this means. Efficiency of fuel or fuel efficiency is being expressed in terms of its calorific value. Basically, how good the fuel is, maybe. Okay. Now, how do we actually define calorific value? It's the amount of heat energy that is being produced. Okay. So, how much energy is being produced when there is complete combustion of 1 kg of fuel? That is known as calorific value. So, different fuels have different cal calorific value and you are going to find out which is the best fuel with highest calorific value that we can use safely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Ideal fuel chahiye hume, bilkul. No pollution. Hey Rahul. Yes. You will have to recommend. All right. Now when we talk about calorific value, it is being expressed in kilojoule per kg. So kilojoule is basically the amount of heat energy that is being produced, right? Kg is the amount of substance. So that is basically the formula of calorific value. How do we calculate the calorific value? 
amount of heat released divided by amount of fuel burned. So the picture is right there. Okay. Now this is the formula that we are going to use. Save it. Store this image in your mind because now you are going to apply it. Are you ready for a numerical? Alright, let's see what the numerical is. 5 kg of coal liberates 10,000 kilojoules of heat on combustion. Find its calorific value. Let's see who is going to be the first one to solve this numerical. I just told you what's the formula of calorific value. How do we calculate it? They have given you the amount of heat that is being released. They have given you the amount of fuel. So, amount of coal is there, amount of heat is there. Let's see. Isha, Chandraganta, everybody has started answering. Pritesh, all of you are saying 2000. Great. Nice. Nitika, Suryansh, Ronak, Ardra, Vishnu. Yash has also given the unit. Well done. So, that's like a complete answer that you have given. Hey, Ashika, it's not joules. Okay. Now, when we talk about this, what is the amount of heat? It is 10,000, right? And how much is the amount of coal that has been given to us? 5. Simple. So, this becomes 2,000 kilojoules per kilogram. Because what is this? This is kilojoules and what is this? This is kilogram. Now, it's very important to mention the unit. If in the exam you will just mention the numerical value, you lose half the mark. And we don't want to do that, right? We want full marks because it's a very easy numerical. So, also note one thing, only J is in uppercase. Rest, everything is in lowercase. That's another place where we might lose marks. So, it's kilojoules per kg. It's 2000 kilojoules per kg. Kilojoules, yes. Kilojoules per kilogram. Absolutely true. Alright. Chalo. Now we know about fuel efficiency. Let's move on to the adverse effects of fuel. Now when we burn fuel, especially carbon based fuels like wood, coal, petroleum, they release a lot of unburned carbon. And this can affect our lungs, it can cause asthma and other respiratory diseases. And that's not what we want, right? So that's why, you know, we need to control the amount of fuels that we are burning. Yes, we need to switch to alternative methods. Absolutely. Now, we think about carbon dioxide, right? Carbon dioxide, even if complete combustion is taking place, carbon dioxide will be produced and we'll be like, that's okay, at least carbon monoxide is not being produced. But hey, excess amount of carbon dioxide is also not good. Why? Because it's a greenhouse gas and it, it, it's going to lead to the rise in Earth's temperature. Ultimately, it can cause global warming. Well, if it's causing global warming, that's not what we want because we know the consequences, the bad consequences of global warming. Yes, Shamon, absorb heat. Yes, Yash, global warming will be increasing. Hey, so what happens if global warming increases? Why, why are we so scared of global warming? Absolutely. Greenhouse effect. Yeah. Absolutely true. Greenhouse gases are causing greenhouse effect. So what happens if, you know, there is global warming happening, temperature increases, ice melts, absolutely. Pritesh says glacier melts, Shivansh says ice is going to melt. Our health will be affected if environment is affected. Absolutely true. We are dependent on the environment, right? So, if in a way we are harming the environment, it's going to come back to us. Floods, increase in sea level, well, all bad things, sure. Absolutely. Nice. So, if I say that, okay, carbon dioxide is, you know, when we talk about carbon dioxide, I know we are talking about something that's very useful when it comes to plants. We require carbon dioxide. Plants require carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Agreed. But excess of anything is bad, even carbon dioxide. So, if it's present in more amounts, it's going to affect us. Eshika says, disaster ho jayega. Ozone layer. All right. Now, next what do we have? Acid rain. 
Now, how exactly is this acid rain being formed? Let's see. When we burn fuel, toxic gases are being released. There are, you know, oxides of sulfur, that sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide that are being released. When they combine with water, what happens? They form the corresponding acid. So, sulfur dioxide combines with water to form sulfuric acid. Nitrogen dioxide combines with water to form nitric acid. And now, these acids are combining with rain, right? And this rain that's coming down, what is it? It's acidic in nature. And what do we call that? We call it acid rain. So, toxic gases released due to combustion of fuels combined with rain water, making it acidic. Absolutely, it's going to affect a lot of things. So, it, it affects plants and animals. It's going to affect aquatic organisms for sure. It's going to wash essential minerals from the soil. And no wonder the beauty of Taj Mahal is just going for a toss. Yes, it is being affected. Hey, what term do we use for that? There is, there is a term. Okay, there are two words. What's happening to Taj Mahal? Okay, the first word starts with M and the second word with C. Let's see, let's see who is going to be the first one to figure out. Yes, it's turning yellow in color. And what do we call this? What is happening to Taj Mahal? And Adira is absolutely right. Marble cancer. Well done, Adira. Great. Yes. All right. Bilkul sahi. Yes, they're going to become dull. And we don't want that to happen to Taj Mahal, right? Bilkul. Color is changing. Absolutely. All right. Now, with this, we've come to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And you don't need to worry about anything. We've got you covered. We have a lot of interesting sessions lined up for you people every Monday to Friday to make you exam ready. All you need to do is subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified about everything, about the sessions, the amazing activities that we have and I really don't want you to miss any one of them. Okay, so hit the bell icon and the next session that we have, so somebody was asking about maths session. Yes, so the next session that we have is on this topic, explore everything about mensuration. So together we are going to explore everything about mensuration on January 13, which is a Thursday. Hey, the time is 4 p.m. Absolutely. Thank you, Sapna. Quickly, yeah, subscribe to the channel. I know you people want Menti. We are going to work on that. Absolutely. See, you wanted us to come up with class 8 and here we are with everything that you wanted, with all the fun-filled activities. So, whatever you want, you put it in the comment section. We'll definitely work on that. All right. Nikita is saying, why on Jan 13, why not tomorrow? Okay. So, we'll try to bring more sessions for you people. I got the point. Great. Also, there is a link being given to you in the description box for a free trial class. So, go ahead, take this free trial class. All your doubts, all your concerns will be sorted and addressed then and there. Yes, absolutely. Okay, what else do we have? Hey, this is an amazing video. Experiment shots video. And in this video, magnesium ribbon. So, this is a magnesium ribbon and it's burning. And when this burns, it's producing a white dazzling flame. It's a very amazing video that you can go and watch. So, pause this session. Go watch this video. I know. Unfortunately, most of you might not be able to go to school as of now because of the external situation there is. But here we are and at Baiju's we've got you covered. So we don't, want you, we don't want you to miss out on anything. So that's why we've made this video for you people. All you need to do is post this session, go watch this amazing video and you'll learn some fun facts out there. All right. Yes. Krish wants some more frequent classes. Okay, we'll work on that, definitely. Hey, Ardha says she's already watched it. Great. Sapna has, Sapna has also watched this. Nice. 
All right. Yes, in experiment shots. Great, great, great. This makes me really happy. Most of you watched the video. Nice. Absolutely. White flame. Yes. Great. All right. Chalo. It's time to sign off now, but I'll see you really soon. Until then, keep smiling, keep practicing, keep learning and keep exploring the magic of chemistry.